Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard for Games. I'm Tony. And I'm Dan. And this is Baltica number five. five. Indeed, number five makes an appearance. <laughs> Today uh, we are taking a look at the Retron 77 by Hyperkin. Now Dan, what the hell does this thing do? So, like everything Hyperkin makes, this is a resurrection of classic gaming hardware with new technology. This one focuses on the Atari 2600, right down to that delightful wood grain veneer. Mm -hmm. mm, straight yes. out of everyone's basement in 1981. That's right. Lassie. Now the great thing about this is that it outputs HDMI. So one of the big issues with the Atari 2600 in my mind is that it's more challenging to hook up. And even when it's not, if you have a like an adapter to do it via coaxial, the image sucks. Yeah, you know? there's no way around it. Yeah. It's either a complete miserable pain to hook up or just a slight pain to hook up. And then it still looks like complete death. So. Yes. so that's the advantage. But let's go ahead and take a look at this thing and see what's in the box to start with. Cheers. Cheers. This is an unboxing of a product that we've already unboxed. What do we got here, Dan? We have the Retron 77 Premium Gaming Console with a very fancy corner. Let's take a look inside. All right, so let's take a look here. First thing I see, joystick with a very nice lengthy cord. A very ergonomically friendly rounded edged troller. Uh, two buttons, I'm assuming this is for left hand, right hand. So we have the console here and the owner's manual. All the accessories included. Actown Shaw. Attention, attention. So we have the SD card in the back. We have a lot of the functions that the Atari did not have before. So if in case you need to save in the middle of a tough, difficult part or reload. Josh, what do you think about it? Do you like the Vernier wood sticker? I love the sticker emulating the original. What do we got in the attention accessories? It doesn't really specify what's on here. So we got our HDMI to, what does that look like? HDMI to HDMI? Yep, so we can support up to 720p. Looks like it's the AC adapter. And our Powered standard up. micro USB to USB. Hey Tony, someone's messing with our wrench rod. Hey, who are you guys? Whoop. Well, I'm glad that those assholes are out of my house. Who were they? I anyway? don't know, but I will be purchasing Brinks Home Security. Hey, Brinks Home Security is a great idea. That is a great idea. This episode was brought to you by Baltica. Number five. Number five. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this unit, a little bit more in depth, but I also want to compare size-wise to some of the originals. So, of course, we have our Retron. This is our original Atari 2600 wood grain. And of course, it dwarfs the Retron. Right. Same thing with the remodel. This is essentially the same thing here. It just doesn't have the wood grain. Try not to move it too much because there's just cords everywhere. Yeah. And we have... I think this was the final officially sanctioned, like actual Atari 2600 hardware, excluding all the flashback and clone consoles and everything. Um, yeah, so it's just- It's still quite a bit smaller. <laughs> still quite a bit smaller. I mean, it's still feels pretty hefty, the Retron, but it's maybe like 55% as big. Yeah. You know? Well, it's kind of nice when you, looking for something you can fit in a cupboard or a drawer yeah. or something. No, it's great because these are huge consoles with cords that you, that are connected to the unit. Permanently. That permanently connected. And this is just so nice. Right. Yeah. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the features here. Now that guy covered some of them, but I'll cover some more. On the back is where it gets really interesting. You know, obviously your power and your HDMI output and such, but we also have a fry button. Ooh. Now, can you explain to us what that does? So, with the original Ataris and their cartridges, it was common to try to wiggle the cartridge on the connectors to produce funny results at the mm -hmm. cartridge reader. So, you know, a play in the game, you sit there and kind of wiggle it on the pins a little yeah. bit to see if you couldn't get something funny to Pull happen. Pull it half out kind of thing. Kind of like cartridge tilting. You know, people cartridge tilt and N64 cartridges, for example. Yeah. You know. So it's all about creating peculiar results. Yeah, glitching. Just by, yeah, it, it's the earliest form of glitching. Yeah, exactly. Now, what they've done here 
is that they've added a software emulator for that so that you don't risk damage to your cartridges, don't risk damage to the cartridge reader. Mm -hmm. So it really does keep that nostalgic hardware experience of the original, but mm. in a significantly safer and easier yeah. manner. It's the perfect millennial version of the uh, twenty, you know, the twenty six hundred because you can cartridge tilt and fry in a safe space. Ooh. Are we going to have to pay the Retron $15 an hour? I think so. Ooh. No. Nine. No. Uh, seven. <laughs> keep it low. <laughs> Never pay. Exactly. Uh, then no we wage, have, just spend. <laughs> we have uh, an aspect ratio button here for three, uh, the original aspect ratio, or 16 by nine. And of course, I'm sure some people That's... in the comments are going to say it wasn't exactly four three. I don't care what it was. It wasn't 16 it was... by 9, that's the important <laughs> part. Only scum will play it in 16 by 9. That's right. And then there's also a, a color in black and white button. Yeah, perfect. So this, it's all the features and buttons and little switches from the original console mm -hmm. brought up into the modern era in a much simpler manner on the new console. Hyperkin seems really good about bringing that very original experience. Yeah forward with new technology. Love it. It's nice. Speaking of the new technology here, now um, those other guys did mention that there was an SD card here, but they didn't mention the massive size. Oh my God, 128 megabytes. Yeah, that's right. So at first I was like, oh my God, Hyper can really, you know, skimped out on us, like really like just went with the cheapest thing possible. But then I was like, that's huge for yeah. Atari ROMs. <laughs> it's an entire Atari catalog. Yeah. All right, so now we're actually playing the Retron 77. We're playing Outlaw, which is one of the friable games. Uh, quick note here, I tried two versions of the Elgato game capture devices, the HD and the HD60S or whatever it's called. Neither of them could record sound. So I'm thinking it's just some sort of a weird software thing. Hopefully we'll be uh, improve upon in the future. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Classic game. Notice I'm oh. wow. <laughs> Notice I'm playing with the Hyperkin controller. He's playing with a third-party controller. This is a Wyco command control stick. It's an original period correct aftermarket controller for this console. And it's very compatible. All seems to work just ah uh, dad yeah, geez. Hey guys. Oh, jeez. Hey. Oh. Ah. Sorry for ah. stealing the Retron 77 earlier. I have brought a peace offering with the Baltica 9. Oh. I think that may entice you guys to play some games with me a little bit. A man after my own heart. Yeah. I'm Dan. I'm Tony. I'm Dan. Who was Very that nice other guy that you were with, the taller gentleman? I was yeah. actually with Epic Josh. I don't oh. know if you know him. Uh, he was the best man in your wedding, actually. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me bring him in here. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, up. Uh, oh, there it is. Still got it. Still got it. No, I saw it. The very is. same. Uh, there he How is. are you, you fine oh, gentleman? How are you? In here. You came oh, in with the Baltica. Uh, ah, there it is. Uh, after this, if you could return to my child and dog, though. Where you know, they? don't make a special trip. Don't out make a special for trip it. out for it. But, but just if you're next in the neighborhood, could you could you we drop that off? We can work that out. All right. Yeah. All right. That's good. So. Generally, gameplay is smooth. It looks, the colors appear, well, very original. Take that as you will. One thing that I will note, just off camera here, is that what you're seeing in the captured gameplay footage is color correct, but the camera has been color corrected to our skin. So the color on the TV in the visuals is like really off and purplish, but that's to make sure that we look normal. Right. So it, it, it looks weird in the camera. All right, so let's see what that fry button does. This is supposedly a good title for frying. Now that we've fried it, now let's hit reset and see what it does again. All right, so we've got this game of Breakout Outlaw, where this time you gotta blast through a wall. Instead of just getting the cactus, you gotta, gotta play your game of Breakout before you can get to the bad guy. I wonder if this also happens if you press the mode button. Press the mode button and see what happens. Back to and we actually have no control. Uh, let's try to reset off of that, and we are back to the original. All right, we'll try mode again. Let's see. Um, one more time. Let's keep going and see if it doesn't uh, eventually hit this breakout thing. Ah, there's uh, a wagon. What is that? <laughs> oh wow! Oh cool. That's kind of fun. Nothing. 
Okay. Right. Quick reset. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, generally. Okay. So the fry seems to repeatedly induce breakout mode. So we're taking a look at Space Invaders. Okay, ready for a little fry action. Oh, <laughs> one on this? one, baby. <laughs> one on one. Uh, you can't see the character Bunch anymore. Bunch zeros. Uh, we still shooting. Try it again. And now there's more enemies. A few guys. All right, so fry, it seems like it takes away most of the enemies and you're pretty much stuck. Fry again. You, you can shoot, right? That's you doing that? Yep, still able to shoot. So it's like a one-on-one. -on -one. Keeps rotating uh, the enemies in the back. Looks like it's you screen. against no one. <laughs> and so we've got Mario Brothers, because you know, this game's been around long enough now that it was pre-Nintendo. Well, pre-NES, you know what I mean? I like it in this version of the game, they're not like some other animal that's vaguely turtle-based. You're just out killing turtles. Try a mode. Hit the mode button. See what happens. Alright, let's see what mode does for you here. Nah. Okay, there there's mode, mode two, so try that. Oh, there's a two- Oh! Uh-oh. Luigi! Here you go. I'm gonna need a joystick here. Try that shit! Yeah, try it. Gameplay. Oh, we Ooh. got a new level. Okay, so this is pretty fried. Or is it a new level? It's like a new Hit the mode. Man. Yeah. Hold on, you gotta get all the, the things in. There's no way. You're being timed. You only got two, two seconds left. One. I have uh, no idea where the platforms. In, invisible platforms. <laughs> it, so it's, so not, it's the same platforms. It, but they're invisible because Correct. you fried it. Yeah. So one of the flaws with the Retron 77 is the fact that it doesn't accept homebrew cartridges. It actually also doesn't accept cartridges that have additional chips. So like Pitfall 2, I think has like a different sound chip or an extra chip in it or something like that. Can't read it, but it can play those games and those types of games on the SD card. So it actually comes preloaded with some games and we also put some games in it as well. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, so this is Zippy the Porcupine, i.e. Sonic the Hedgehog, Aquazone. I mean, this is like, Shockingly smooth for oh I was not paying attention. <laughs> Shockingly smooth for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. They they pulled out all the stops on this one. I mean look how fast it is. Well you gotta yeah. go fast. You gotta go fast. I mean granted yes of course it's nothing compared to the Genesis but it's the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. No I fell off. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if these homebrews were meant to be fried. All right, how much Halo fits <laughs> in Atari? Okay, so this is this is not one of the homebrew games that came on the included SD card. We added this ourselves, and I'm already kind of in love with how cute this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the gun. There's the gun. All right, try firing. Okay, there I can I can shoot nice. most of the bad guys. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's just a tree. Is it? I'm I don't know guessing. what that is. I wouldn't touch it. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh he was, dead. He was dead. dead. you dick. Oh. Okay, so pretty wildly exceeds my expectations of what you can do with a 2600. Thank you so much for watching today. Josh is so damn tall, we couldn't even frame him in the shot. <laughs> but speaking of which, Josh, why don't you go ahead and give us your uh, quick thoughts on the Retron 77. I think for the cost of it and the fact that you get some things included, or the, the four games or so, I still think it's worthwhile. I think you'll pull it out on that periodic uh, drunken hangout night. Yeah, definitely good for that. Dan? Great system to take you back to the good old days, and I like that it is HDMI friendly. Hopefully we get that audio working, but yeah. uh, mm. it handles very smoothly. The graphics yeah. look good on some of those homebrews, and I think... Uh, it's actually uh, really fun to play, so get a group of guys together and take it on. Oh boy. I think it's classic Hyperkin where they've taken the very authentic experience, mm. brought it into the modern era with reliable, easy to obtain technology. All in all, two thumbs up. Indeed. You know, I, I agree with everything that you guys have said. I think it's an awesome unit. I would just give it one critique that I feel like this is an experimental system. I feel like they wanted to see how the 2600 would sell right? Or the Retron 77 emulating the 2600. I feel like what they really should have done and will probably do if this is successful is have a unit that's 2600, 5200, and 7800 all in one box. Because you basically, you're going to have like a big scope, 
of Atari consoles that you can play just in one unit. That's ultimately what I think it should have been. Um, also, I'd love to see one with the, the ColecoVision and television. Like, there's just so many consoles from that era, you know, they would be so cool to just add them all in, similar to what the Retron 5 is doing. That said, for what it is, very happy that it exists. So we agreed. We're out of beer and it's like 1 a.m. <laughs> so, <laughs> so cheers. Sorry, folks. Cheers. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for ringing that bell. Take it easy, guys. Thank you again for watching, and we can't wait to see all of you at our meet and greet in September. Details in the description below.